All right, today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, we're messing around with some buildings today. And I have taken some old brown paneling. And as you can see here, I cut out four walls and kind of a cool little roof that I whipped up here. And so what we've got here is basically a building that can take one 86-foot box car all the way inside that's what we're that's what we're doing and I've, this is made out of totally out of scratch there are no actual parts here um, got these kind of cool, cool green propeller things on the top what those are they are the tops to applesauce packets and what we want to do now is create a lighting effect as you can see, I painted the inside teal. Okay, I use some I use some uh, craft paint that I got at Walmart. It's like less than a dollar a tube, and I sort I did that on the outside too. I painted a um, kind of a tan color, and then this is my Axiom Atomic building. What I did was I used two pieces for the roof. So I got these cool circles in it that are just big enough for these little propellers I'm going to put in here. The second piece holds the support beam like this. And I painted the inside with some uh, gold spray paint. And the reason I did that is when the lights are on it'll reflect off the top kind of give a cool gold gold light light effect to it and it also by making it two levels and then taking some little pieces some of these little leftover cutouts I glued them on there to give it give me room to hide the wires and stuff so now as you can see here we've got one two three of these spots between the fans that's where my lights are going to go and put three leds in there and then when i was checking leds i found this really cool red led so i think i'm also going to go ahead and stick a red led on the top corner opposite corners and obviously this building serves no no prototype purpose other than on the layout It'll be one stop where you can drop off one boxcar and pick it up. Um, what they do there, who knows? It says Axiom Atomic, must be something secret. Okay, so that's how it works. And that's what we're going to do. So we're gonna, today we're going to do a wiring harness. So let's go over here to the workbench and take a look at some stuff. Um, now, as you've seen in my other videos, this here is my test ring. You can see that. I've got a bunch of LEDs. I've got a bridge rectifier, a 1K resistor, and then a loop of LEDs. Um, what this does is this helps me remember exactly which way everything is supposed to be wired. If you don't have one of these, you should make one. That way you don't have to figure out every time if you're doing it right or wrong. You can look carefully in line here. If we can focus on that. See if we can focus on that. Okay, it shows me which side the big piece should be on, which side the little piece should be on to get LEDs in the loop. And let me go ahead and power that up so you can see what it looks like. It, uh, it is an extremely handy little tool to have. And here's the thing, with using the bridge rectifier right here means that when I hook up my alligator clips, it can be AC or DC, and it doesn't matter which side goes where. The rectifier fixes everything, gets all the electricity going the right direction, and we don't have to worry about, did we hook it up wrong? If you've got the rectifier in there right, you're not going to be wrong when you connect it to power, and AC or DC. Ultimately, I'm probably going to use AC power to do my my hot leads will be AC instead of DC okay but right now I've got it hooked up to DC on the 
on my Tech 2 1500 here. And if I turn it on, you can see, see there's that red one right there. I thought it was going to be a white one, but it turned out to be red and might make kind of a cool effect. Here's a yellow one. Then this one here, see how bright that is? I'm going to use three of those on the inside. And then here are some square ones where you can only see their lights if you're looking at the very tip of them. But this little tool here, this tells me how I'm going to wire it. This is exactly how I'm going to wire the building in a loop like this. And so I'm gathering my materials and my intention is that we get a cool lighting effect inside this building. What is required to do this is a simple bridge rectifier, which I bought like a pack of a couple hundred on eBay, I think for $3 or something. A 1K resistor. And with my tool here, it tells me which direction. Resistors, when you get them in your, in your circuit the right way, there's a, there is a metallic stripe on one end that's got to be in the right direction. And this thing here tells me which way. So I don't have to go look it up. I don't need to keep anything around. And I can check my LEDs in the ring first to see if they're bright enough. I'm going to be using three of these um, five millimeter high brightness white LEDs. Their intensity is 7,000 and they were Radio Shack ones, which I believe you can still buy on RadioShack.com. But I got packs of them also from other places. Um, what I like about the Radio Shack ones is they come in a bag that tells you what they are so that you don't have them like in the box over here. I have to check these to find out what they are and how bright they are. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use again this Strive Day 30 gauge wiring that I love to use on everything else. And since I've got two colors I don't use, which is the yellow and the blue, those are the colors I'm going to use for this. I'm going to use, in the loop here you can see power comes into the rectifier, heads out to the resistor around the loop and back. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use, do just like this, rectifier, resistor, then I'm going to go yellow wire and LEDs all the way around. When I get to the final one, I'm going to switch that last wire, I'm going to make that last one the blue one that comes back to the rectifier. It makes it a little easier to see and understand. You can use all the same color if you want to, it doesn't matter, you can paint it, whatever. But I kind of like to have my stuff so that I know by looking at it, what it was I was trying to do. Other things you will need are the rosin, the rosin soldering flux. And yep, this is the Radio Shack stuff. This is my favorite flux of all, is the Radio Shack rosin. And it one thing of this lasts for a couple of years. And then I've got some fine solder here. I like this little little stuff use that and then I'm going to use the hot glue gun to glue the that's how I'm going to keep the wiring in place I like the hot glue gun because it um, you can change your mind with it later and you don't really have to wait for it to once you, once you put it down it pretty much is is set in just a minute alright so let's get started <laughs> 